see before you go, the McLean side have the young footballer of the year, Jack McCaffrey, one to three. Uh, Kieran Kilkenny, uh, three to one, and Paul Mannion, eight to one. I think uh, Jack McCaffrey's nailed on. There. Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, a fantastic wing half back, um, possibly the, <laughs> the, possibly the fastest player in, in Gaelic <laughs> right. football at the minute. And you know, I'm just glad I'm not still playing the game to, right. to be chasing after him. But um, you know, he's he's put in a, a great uh, championship season. You know, deb debut season and you know Kieran Kilkenny also has fantastic ability but I don't think he's set the world a, a light you know j just so far I would say Kieran's uh, best performance was probably its second half against uh, Mead in the Leinster final apart from that there for me it, it has to be Jack McCaffrey because he's been consistently good across the board for them this year so at, at 1-3 to three, I certainly think it's, it's, it's odds on now we go to this now, footballer of the year. They've got the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight names there. Sean Campbell even mentioned. I don't think Sean Campbell will win player of the year because I think you have to be in the uh, the All Ireland final, but he should be at least made it uh, there. Yeah. But but uh, Aidan O'Shea, he needs a good shift, and Seamus O'Shea is back down there. What thirty? 30 to 1, 20 to 1, yeah. 50 to 1, my God. You know, if, if Seamus O'Shea puts in a good shift on, on Sunday, <laughs> man of the match, that'll be two man, man yeah. of the match awards in a row for him. And, you know, um, certainly uh, if you pick up a man of the match in semi final and final, you're certainly having a good shout. Mm -hmm. and, and at 50 to 1, he'd be worth uh, putting the punt on. But, you know, Wade O'Shea has been outstanding for Mayo. You know, he, he really epitomises what this Mayo team is about. Um, you know, hard work, um, graft, skill as well, and and really doing it for the team. And I, he's one of James Horn's most important players, and you know he's really stepped up to the plate this year. And you know when you look at his performances over the last couple of years, maybe a year or two ago you you would have been saying that he's a wee bit overweight, but he's certainly toned down. He's got mm -hmm. himself in a fantastic shape, and you know his performances are, are backing that up as well. Jim McConley in at eight to one, um, second favorite. Yeah, possibly uh, that's a fair reflection on on Jim's performance this year um, the only downside to Jamers um, you know, games to date is you know when there is an opportunity to present himself he's just not as clinical as what he can be on occasions and um, you know but he's still a classy forward um, left or right foot it doesn't make a difference and you know he has the potential to really turn it on his head on the All-Ireland final day and the, the interesting thing for me you know from a Dublin perspective uh, only he's, he's, he's nailed on to get the young footballer of the year. I'd have thought Jack McCaffrey would have been a better choice <coughs> actually to be footballer of the year than, than uh, uh, Jeremy Connolly. Yeah, but um, y you tend to see when, when they are that young and they're really breaking through in their debut season that um, they will only be um, nominated for the young player of the year. And, and mm -hmm. that's probably fair enough as well. But, you know, across the board, Jack McCaffrey, I'm sure, when it comes down to the Dublin Awards at the end of the year, will, will more than likely be awarded the Dublin Footballer of the Year, you know, mm -hmm. which is amazing. But, um, you know, in terms of of the the seniors within the Dublin camp, um, you have to look at Jim McConley. He was a player that put in a, a fantastic display against Kerry as well. You know when when things were going against him, he was one player that you know made himself available all over the pitch. You know set up plays, got on the end of moves and, and uh, kick scores. He also missed a few uh, opportunities as well, but you know he's a player that. Um, has the potential, as I say, to, to put in a fantastic display in an All Ireland final, and you can really turn it on its head. I can't believe in those odds that Bernard Brogan in their Footballer of the Year and Sean Cabinet yeah, well, there. I just you know, I can't get over yeah, it. It's all, it's all geared towards finals. I guess that's ridiculous. Yeah, right? well, you also have to say that you know Bernard's there on, on his reputation um, of, of years gone by. He probably hasn't performed at, at the mm -hmm. highest level this year, but you know Bernard certainly has the potential, and he's probably there because of the potential that a he good has. Player. Good He's a fantastic player, yeah, and fantastic. you know he can certainly uh, go into this final on Sunday and throw the shackles off, and you know perform at a high level. And, and certainly fourteen to one is good odds for Bernard. I can't wait. Those two Hill sixteen tickets you're giving me, I just can't wait to see it. There you Were are. they not uh, Nally Stan? No? Nally Stan, I think. Are. Stevie, yeah. thank you very much. No I really appreciate that. Somebody's handed me a phone. I can't. What, what does it say there? What, what, what's that? Yeah, say it's gone. Is I it? Know, what does that say? Probably. What, what, what this is the betting. Mayo and Clare three to one. Mayo and Cork eleven to four. Dublin and Clare five to two. Dublin and Cork twenty three to ten. Do you know what me about all this betting? All you need is one bet. If I you think, if you I think the result, three, the three at the start the of the yeah. season, you'd be away. You'd yeah. be in your own. You'd, you'd, no, you'd be in your own. The, the five to two island. shot there looks looks the best bet for me. Dublin again. Dublin and Clare. Um, you know it was a fantastic hurling final. Cork possibly lucky that the you know they got the, the mm -hmm. draw out of it. Clare showed glimpses uh, of acceleration. Sheer brilliance, for ultimately. Sheer brilliance. And, and the one thing that really, really impressed me about the Clare team was their ability to, to give blind passes and, and every one of them blind passes walking out. You know, they just had a telepathic 
communication with each other and they, they understood each other's game and you know some of the score taken <laughs> alone was, was fantastic and <laughs> The only thing that gets me about the hurling and the football, like uh, we we pan all the pundits in football because yeah. we thought they were they were getting uh, going crazy, which they were, and people were out of line uh, throughout the season, which they were. And then you go to the hurling pundits, and you can do anything. Nobody deserves to get sent off. Oh, absolutely! Oh, absolutely! Yeah. absolutely. It was an accident. Like you know, he was decapitated by mistake. Like he didn't really mean that. Yeah, but you know, uh, and, and that's that's what is expected, and and you know. It's allowed in hurling, you know, compared to football. But um, you know, I, I myself like a wee bit of physicality in football, and you know, I think the physicality element of the game is 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 being left left behind. But um, certainly, you know, you have to look back at this year overall and be happy with both hurling and football. They've been oh, fantastic they're they're championship yeah. seasons and fantastic probably the, season. the best seasons uh, for both uh, codes in a long time. And yeah, uh -huh. you know, Regardless of how Sunday's match goes, um, I do expect it to be a classic, but regardless of how it goes, you, you can look back and say it was one of the best uh, football seasons ever. Stevie, thank you very much indeed.